Hello, um, my name is uh, Daniel. Uh, this is Christopher Mojica. This is I am Carlos Mejia. And uh, today we're doing uh, Team 5 is doing uh, hybrid cars. Um, today we're going to learn about what hybrid cars are, their past history, present history, and future history, uh, what the benefits and concerns are, and what are the proposed solutions for our project concerns uh, the, in regards to hybrid cars, which is the range. Hi what is a hybrid technology? Hybrid technologies uses different sources of power. They can be combined in various different ways. Internal combustion engine and electric hybrid vehicles are the most common. Uh, they improve fuel economy and increase power using the auxiliary power such as either the gas engine or the electric engine to assist. Um, electric motors are usually used in slow maneuvers and then the gasoline engine takes over in uh, higher speed uh, maneuverability. Vehicles that use um, different fuels is also considered uh, hybrid vehicles. They're called dual fuel uh, that include uh, ethanol and gasoline or petroleum and diesels as well. Uh, the history, past history of hybrid vehicles started in uh, uh, 1899 with an invent American inventor called H. Piper, which invented the first uh, hybrid vehicle. Previous history before that, they were mostly steam engines only or electric engines only. Uh, but H. Piper was the first one to combine both of them effectively and use history uh, and, and for the rest of history. Um, in 1904, um, unfortunately, Henry Ford um, uh, provided a uh, overcame the concerns regarding the internal combustion engine, which prevented hybrid vehicles from becoming normal and more popularized since the fuel was cheaper and electric vehicles were a little more expensive than their internal combustion engines. Um, after that, uh, uh, the advancement of Henry Ford, uh, hybrid vehicle production declined and hybrid vehicles like in uh, Baker of Cleveland and Woods of Chicago continues to sell poorly due to the concerns regarding the high prices of hybrid vehicles at that time compared to their petrol only engine counterparts. Um, between 1920 and 1965, uh, hybrid technology and hybrid uh, con uh, con consumer Manufacturers were declined. Almost nothing was produced between those times. Until 1966, the air pollution concerns regarding uh, using petrol-only um, oils or um, um, electric vehicles. The electric vehicles started to come back as a means to reduce such uh, concerns regarding um, polluting pollutions and concerns regarding that. In 1969, um, uh, along with the Clean Air Acts that were enacted in 1966, uh, the General Motors produced the first experimental hybrid car called the GM 512, and it was produced, but only in limited numbers, and uh, it wasn't too popular, as you can see. This is an example of the GM 512. The past, um, continuing on with the past, in 1970s, the oil embargo and the Arab nations um, increased interest in the electric vehicles due to uh, the high prices of fuel and the embargo of the oils coming back to the USA. Um, with, along with that, after the oil embargo, they sought to increase um, uh, fuel efficiencies for the cars uh, to burn to burn cleaner oils and reduce the emissions produced by petrol engines only. Um, from then on, it's just to kept the ball rolling. Um, and in 1997, the Toyota Prius was released in Japan. Um, it sold very well. It sold nearly 18,000 vehicles in its first year alone, but it was only in Japan, uh, Japan only. After that, um, we saw the first uh, Honda Insight was uh, the first hybrid car to release in the United States uh, for the mass market. And the rest uh, will present with uh, Carlos. 
So I'm here to speak about the presence of the private parts. There are over 40 different conventional hardware cards right now sells in the market available. The Toyota Priors has been the top seller card since the hybrid part. The hybrid card cover almost three to four percent of all the car sales in the United States. And in 2013, there were almost 600 sales of the 600 stick thousand sales, hybrid card sales in the United States. Since 2006 to today, the sales of the hybrid card have been doubled. So the types of hybrid cards, there are like five hybrid cards. There's the mild hybrid card, the parallel or fury hybrid cards, the series hybrid, the pure electrical, and the plug-in. So the mild hybrid, the mild hybrid card is moved by the power and the fuel power engine. The electrical engine assists the car when you need a little bit more power to move the car. So the parallel of fluid hybrid, in here the electrical engine and the fuel engine work like together. When the car is going to is going to short distance or in a really low speed, the electric, electrical engine moves the car. But when they get to higher speeds, they, when it's come the full energy, the full engine car to move it. The series car like the Chevrolet Bolt is designed to travel like 40 to 50 miles to the batteries. It does engine only generates electricity to recharge the batteries. The plug-in, the General Motors has announced the version of the Saturn View. It's a crossover that can move up to 15 miles with the electrical engine. When the, when the electrical engine battery is going too low, the fuel engine moves the car and also recharges the battery. The Tesla is an example for the pure electrical car. It's, it moves only by battery pack by a lithium ion battery port and it can be gold until 244 miles on the battery power. It can be recharged like to 3.5 to 4 hours. So these are uh, lot, there are a lot of manufacturers for the hybrid cars. As we can know, there are the biggest ones like Toyota, Honda, Chevrolet, GMC, Ford. Uh, but in here we have like the biggest one of the sales is Toyota. It has like 60% of the market share. Then it comes forward with only 15%. Uh, from here to on, the Toyota market is losing power because there are too many other options to get before the Toyota Prius. So there's the pros and cons of the hybrid cars. The pros are the fuel economy, is really cheaper than the gasoline, reduce the emissions, the, they, they can increase torque and power of the full engine cars. And is, there's currently like more than 50, 100 stations so you can recharge your car. Because our, the, the cars are a little bit more expensive, they have a resale value lower than the original, the, the fuel cars. There are more accidents with this and it can be recharged between three to four hours. So some other benefits of the hybrid cars are the, as we said before, there is full efficiency so it has the cost of the energy is, a, is cheaper than the full energy. They have a less more, less more uh, CO2 emissions. So the, also, there are, we don't need extra infrastructure for the cars because there are already too much stations that, for fuel and diesel. And the last benefit of the hybrid cars is the HOV. It means the high occupancy vehicles. In some, some states, there is a uh, highways or way or streets when you can go with less traffic and you don't need the high occupancy persons in your car to be part of that. Well, we already talked about the benefits. Uh, a lot of concerns about the hybrid parts is going to be the cost of the battery. It's a little more expensive than the, than the simple battery of the fuel cars. There will be expensive to recycle, to recycle all the materials of the cars. And the energy, it will be a lot more, they will, we are going to use a lot more energy to, pro, to produce the hybrid cards than the fuel electric cars. So now it's going to be Christopher talking about the future of the hybrid cars. Hello class, my name is Chris Mojica once again. I'm here to discuss the future improvements on the hybrid cars. The, we're going to focus on two key components. The first component is basically improving the, hype, the battery of the hybrid car 
and also making it appeal more to consumers. Improvements that, improvements that need to be done on the battery is that it has to be less expensive, have longer battery life, and less weight. In regards to the battery itself, just to replace a battery costs approximately $3,000. In regards to the battery life itself, the, power, the battery doesn't have enough power, which makes it run slow, which creates higher failure rates. And in regards to the weight itself, because it's too heavy, it takes more energy for the car to basically to run. Here are three different types of batteries that have been tested on hybrids. The first one is nickel metal high drive, and the second one is lithium ion battery, and the third one is lead acid battery. This is the first type of battery that we're going to discuss, which is called nickel metal high drive. Currently right now, all, hy all hybrids run with this type of battery. It's reliable, has a long life expectancy, and it's environmental friendly, and it's not too expensive in regards to other batteries. The disadvantage that this battery might have is that it's very heavy compared to a lithium ion battery, which is less lighter than that. Than, than it. The second battery we're going to discuss today is the lithium ion battery. This is the battery that we'll most likely see in the, in the future of the hybrids. Certain advantages that this, this battery offers is that it has high energy and high power based on its weight and volume. And the second advantage that it has is that it's the most efficient battery out there. Unfortunately, this battery is unproven. It hasn't really been tested out. Here's a third battery we're going to discuss, which is called the lead acid battery. This battery has been out there for quite a long time, but unfortunately, companies such as GM, Ford, and, and etc. don't really want to invest their time in this battery. For one thing, this battery is in, is in, it, it's harmful to the environment but at the same time, it's the most less expensive battery compared to the others. Technologies that are currently being tested include the ultracapacitor. Here is an image of a car that is actually being tested with an ultracapacitor. It's a Toyota Supra HBR. Ultracapacitors have given positive signs in testing. For example, in the previous slide, it was a picture of a car that car was a Toyota Supra HDR. That car has been tested at the Japan's Tokashi International Speedway, in which it basically outdistanced or, or outlapped non hybrid cars. The ultra capacitors demonstrated, demonstrated delivering energy more quickly and creating acceleration much faster. You may wonder how ultra capacitors work compared to batteries. Well, for one thing, the ultra capacitor has the ability to capture electricity from the regenerated braking system from where the electricity is powered, is powered to the car, which will then accelerate the car. It also stores energy in an electric field between a closely spaced conductor. The electricity that the electricity in the electric field is then separated based on its positive and negative charges. Why replace batteries with ultra capacitors? Well, for one thing, ultra, capacitor, ultra capacitors have a longer operating life. It has a rapid charge, low ESR, it's environmental friendly, and it outperformed the nickel metal hydride, which is the battery that all hybrids nowadays have. How is it possible to make hybrid cars more appealing to consumers, you may ask? Well, increasing the battery lifespan, giving it more power, making it more affordable, and more physically appealing are things that will make it more attractive to consumers. For one thing, increasing the battery lifespan means that, means that it will basically decrease the failure rates of the battery Giving it more power means that it will basically make it much, much faster compared to hybrids of nowadays. 
making it more affordable mean, which will mean that more people will be able to afford it. Um, here are a couple of examples of cars that are appealing. For example, the 2009 Mercedes ML 450 Hybrid, the BMW X6 Hybrid, and the 2013 Cadillac Escalade Hybrid. Here are a couple of uh, another examples of appealing hybrids, which are the Fisker Karma, which costs 96,000, and the 2010 and the 2010 Tesla Roadster, which costs 109,000. Imagine that. Imagine if those car prices were cheaper, how many more people would be able to drive these cars? Compared to these cars right here, which were more cheaper and less attractive. <laughs> um, to conclude, with increasing regulations, you will see more hybrid cars in the future. As technology progresses, you will see cars with longer ranges and cleaner impact on the environment. Maybe one day we'll be able to see this car in the near future.